look at all the different peppers, both uh, in chili uh, and in spice. Uh, Serrano, very, very hot. Little red jalapenos. And then you got the dry chili peppers that also have very intense heat, like the ancho and, oh, yes, indeed. These little guys here are a little cayenne pepper that have been dried out. And uh, you just keep looking at all the chilies and all the different chilies that make things hot, what the world would be like. So I decided to, uh, to start off with tonight's show with a little hot drink, a little hot and spicy drink. And what we're going to do is this. We're going to take some of those chilies, the red chilies, first of all, and what we're going to do is put them inside of our little bottle here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to infuse some vodka to make this uh, our sort of homemade... Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> so you need to do this for a couple of weeks. If you're going to do this at home, unless, you know, you can buy them already spiced now. So uh, we'll cap it up. And uh, then what we'll do is we'll uh, just sort of let that infuse, like I said, for a couple of weeks. The longer, obviously, the hotter it's going to be. So uh, after a couple of weeks, uh, we, we can use it. And then you can decide whether you want to eliminate the chilies. I like to just leave mine in. And uh, just you can kind of see a little discoloration uh, from the chili peppers. Now, Bloody Mary mix. Love it. And I prefer to make my own. Um, some people would prefer to just buy different brands. Let me just show you one that's real simple. Uh, simple tomato juice. Use a good quality tomato juice. And then um, I use the juice of lime and lemon. Then I use uh, fresh horseradish root. And uh, that would be the root that's peeled that you grate. It's unbelievable, the difference between fresh horseradish root and not. I also use a little bit of uh, ginger. And of course, you gotta have some garlic in there, you know, just to kind of make sure. I like to put the uh, juice of at least one lemon, depending on how much juice is in the lemon. Very, very simple. Maybe a little uh, pinch of salt. And then one last ingredient that I personally love is a little Worcestershire sauce, which gives it really, in my opinion, the kick. Now, again, you can do this ahead of time, which you should. Just get all that horseradish and ginger, et cetera, in there. And then what I do is put it in a little glass jar container and keep it in the ice box for a couple of days. Let it just kind of get really, really nice and delicious. So, you know, to have a really good Bloody Mary takes a little prior planning. Now, when you're ready for that special Bloody Mary, here's how I like to fix them. I believe in some ice cubes. And then the garnish, you know, you can really garnish however you want, but I'm gonna show you my favorite garnish. And then you go to the ice box and take out your wonderful Bloody Mary mix that you made. Then you have your own pepper vodka that you infused. Oh yeah, babe. <laughs> that would be mine. <laughs> and then you just kind of want to take this here and use that fresh Bloody Mary mix. Nothing like a good Bloody Mary. The eye opener of eye openers. Now look, what I do with the celery, I just cut the stem off and I cut the top off like this, and I use that. Oops. Again, I mean, I wanna like enjoy the celery. 
And then last but not least, at least in New Orleans, we're going to have a little pickled okra. Oh, yeah, babe. That's the vitamin part of the drink. So there you have it, a little homemade spicy pepper Bloody Mary.